Hello, how are you? I uh, hope you're having a good weekend. So Women's International Football is back. We blinked and it was gone for a month, exactly. Uh, and it returns with the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, we've just watched England beat Austria 2-0. Uh, interesting game and a bit of tale of two halves. Um, and of course, England from that game and from that result have secured World Cup qualification 2023 Australia and New Zealand, England will be there and um, from that performance and from what that squad can do, I actually think, you've got to be careful how you say this, but England absolutely have a chance of going to the World Cup and winning it. They're so strong in all areas of the pitch, but it's definitely that depth, the depth that that squad has is just star, it's stardust and Serena Wiegmann must be rubbing her hands together when she can make those changes that she can do um, and for those players to come on and actually instantly impact a game, every single player. And we saw so many different players come into the squad as well today. Of course, we've had a couple of retirements with Jill Scott uh, and Ellen White and then a few players uh, getting their call-ups as well. Um, let's get into them in just a second. But first, um, the scoreline being 2-0. Um, I actually thought in the first half, Austria were the better side. Um, England just weren't quite at it. They were missing something, perhaps not having Ellen White in there. Um, was a little bit different. They weren't really grinding the way they were used to. Um, that's what it felt like from my opinion watching the game. There's just something lacking uh, in, that, in that first half performance. It was just a little bit off um, and I think when you look to Austria in the first half they were quite an organized side they really felt together I felt we saw that from them in the Euros as well and um, it's funny because it, if you watch that game tonight I felt that England were a little bit tested by Austria and I felt the same in the opening game at Old Trafford of the Euros as well if you remember back it was Austria who they played in that opening game of the Euros and I, I felt that they were difficult to break down and England didn't they didn't necessarily struggle but they weren't exactly dominating possession all the time uh, and Austria are certainly ones to to watch I think going forward they, they certainly have a lot to offer like I say organise the link up play between um, uh, Veen Reuter and Zadrazil I think could look threatening in that first 45 minutes uh, and Veen Reuter is, is now at Arsenal, she's a right back and I actually think from the campaign that she had at the Euros and from even her performance tonight I think she's actually chapping at the door to kind of get that start for Arsenal this season, Noel Moritz is in that that position just now, the Swiss international and certainly Veen Reuter has had a, a, a decent a decent run of it of late and is getting to show what she has to offer. So that could be one to watch moving forward into next season. But uh, England, let's focus there, shall we? Two decent goals as well. Alessio Russo uh, getting the first goal at seven minutes in. Um, and it came, the cross came in from Greenwood. Hemp didn't quite connect with it and, and Alessio Russo finished things off. Uh, and then the second goal came from Nikita Paris, buzzing for her. She replaced Beth Mead and she just makes it look easy. It, it's brilliant to see Nikita Paris coming in after getting the move that she got in the summer. She's now at Manchester United, of course. And I just think the more we see from her playing in the WSL, the more we're going to see her for England moving forward because we know what she can do. And also she brings that. For me, it's aggression. You know, she's an aggressive player. She doesn't go quietly. She's a nuisance. She's a pest in the box. Um, and, and she looked outstanding tonight as well. Nearly made it a brace, actually, uh, but didn't quite take it home. But good good to see her uh, getting that run for England as well. But uh, let's just start on the, the changes as well. So they set up as a 4-2-3-1, uh, which is a little bit different from Wiegmann's usual approach. And um, in the starting lineup, we were missing Rachel Daly um, at left back, which was interesting because we saw Alex Greenwood come in, which we know obviously can happen. Um, but I'm curious as to why that can, ha why that, why that was the choice as well. Um, we know that Rachel Daly has made the move to Villa in the summer. How she's settling in. Uh, perhaps there's other things going on just to make it adjust uh, but interesting to see Alex Greenwood in there and she has such a decent defender as well um, but yeah I, I like the setup I thought it looked really good I'm pleased to see Rusa in there I'm pleased to see Ella Toon in there I feel that they deserve to be there um, and of course it was a it was a it was a win. It was exactly what they needed. They needed that one point, and now they're going to the World Cup. Um, looking at my notes, what was I going to say? Yeah, not not their best performance, but kind of getting the job done. Um, and I actually felt that Mary Earps was tested tonight as well. Uh, there was a moment in the second half at about forty seven minutes, just a minute into the second half, um, and she played it out. It was almost a bit too confident. 
Um, and the the attacker came in and just kind of nearly took the ball from her. It was a really dodgy, hairy moment. And Mary Epps is full of confidence and she's an outstanding goalkeeper, but it's moments like that where it can be almost just a little bit dodgy, you know, just like clear it or, or get the ball out of your hands, something like that. It just it felt that those were moments that England weren't as sharp as they had been at the Euros in my humbled opinion anyway. Uh, we got to see Beth England come on, uh, who didn't get on at the Euros at all. Uh, Jess Carter as well, our Chelsea teammate and former Chelsea player Lauren James, sorry, current Chelsea player Lauren James, um, all getting on as well. Now, if you're watching this and you, you maybe you, I can't imagine why you don't know this, but Lauren James, of course, is Rhys James's sister. Um, and she still she doesn't need that introduction anymore, but I always think it's great to reassure people um, that she is one of the bright, shining lights for England coming through. She has been for many years, um, but she's still adjusting, getting to grips with her fitness um, and the rest of things. But um, it'll be interesting to see what she can do for England moving forward. I think if, you can, if she can get a decent run in the WSL this season, um, get minutes under her belt, we probably will see her feature at the World Cup uh, for England next year, which I think could be deadly. She's just such an amazing talent. And Lucy Ward was the commentator on the game tonight. She was saying one of the best natural footballers that she's ever seen uh, and one of the best since Kelly Smith. Um, so there you go. There's some pressure on your shoulders. Um, Lauren James, Jess Carter as well coming in I think is absolutely brilliant again another player I think has been solid for our club all season, last season uh, and the season before uh, and great to see her getting on tonight as well and Bethany England, she played a part in that goal uh, for Nikita Paris so when we talk about what England have to offer, they've almost got two starting livings is what it feels like it feels like they could actually do that um, and and I, when I look at that bench and when I look at the impact that they can have coming on the game, it's like, yes, it makes sense. It makes sense that, that England will be pushing to really, really destroy teams in the World Cup. I'm hoping Scotland are going to get there as well. I was at the Ireland game, the Republic of Ireland game against Finland uh, in Tala a couple of nights ago. And I want to see the players that are so prominent in the WSL make it there for their countries as well. And watching Austria, England tonight, you can see some of those key players just getting that chance, you know, moving into these big tournaments who are really stepping up and performing. Uh, and I'm really enjoying seeing that and I hope we get that for Scotland as well. When you look at Republic of Ireland the other night against Finland, okay, they got the result that they needed. But when you look at England, they're set up, they're, they're everything. You know, they've got it down. They've got options. They've got backup. They just play really brilliant football and they're putting away results. Again, another game unbeaten for Serena Wiegmann. You know, you've got the young talent like Alessio Russo. That's nine goals in 14 games for England. They're outstanding. They're so good. And then you look at the bench with Nikita Paris. You know, even likes of Beth England. She's one of the best strikers, you know, that WSL's ever seen. And she's sitting there on the bench, you know. But the more we see them coming on, the more we're thinking they're going to feature as the World Cup goes on anyway. So as that game ended there at full-time whistle, I did think to myself, mm-hmm, yeah, England are going to the World Cup and they'll be definitely be feeling ready for it, especially how that talent is progressing. Okay, you look at the likes of US, they've got strength and depth as well. Of course they have, but England do rival that. And I think it's only getting closer for them. It feels like that anyway, but... Um, there we go, back to another qualifying campaign. I'm going to go through, let's keep tabs on it. I'm hoping Scotland and Republic of Ireland and Wales are next as well. <laughs> 